did you have, I mean, you know how much I like you. You know, we've had more good conversations here than anybody has. Did you have trepidation about doing this? Because I think you're wrong, but I don't know. So therefore, I can't prove it. Yeah, I did. You know, I didn't want trepidation to do it. Saying, why do it. Why do I, Michael Crichton, need to go here? Uh, I mean, just keep my opinions to myself. I, I did. I didn't want to write it. I decided I wouldn't write it. I had breakfast with a friend of mine, a scientist who I hadn't seen in 30 years, and I told him my dilemma, and he said, no, no, you have to write it. I said, I'm going to get killed for this. He said, no, you have to write it. I would like to be able to say that as a result of that conversation, I decided to write it. I didn't. I went home and I thought, you know what, I'm not writing this. I'm just, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, as you said, keep my opinion to myself. I started to work on something else, and I felt like a coward. Mm. And I thought, what are you going to do? You have looked at the data, and you really believe that it's, it's an effect, but not something that the, and that, the, that, the, that we as human beings should be worrying about lots and lots of other things. I mean, since I'm taking the Bjorn Lomborg position, it's low on the totem pole. We ought to be taking care of disease. We ought to be taking care of world hunger. We ought to be taking care of a lot of things before we do this. And Before we spend money on global warming, is yeah, that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. But, but you're not arguing that we shouldn't reduce our, the amount of fuel, fossil fuel we put in the atmosphere. No, I think I mean, you, you, you'd be happy with, with tougher standards on auto emissions and all that stuff. Well, we should have done it decades ago. Yeah, so you're, anything you can do, you're in... I'm, I was in favor of a carbon tax 25 years ago, you know? I mean, it, it's a very logical thing to do. Still waiting for it, but, you know... Yeah, but so, in other words, you, 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 you have no invested interest in being opposed to this, and, in fact, most of the things that people want to do to restrict it, you're in favor of. Yeah. I want, an, I want an environment that's great. I don't think this is as important a problem as other people do. That's the essence of it. That's the bottom line. Mm. You know, I testified f um, in front of the Senate, which I found to be just a, a, a very, very actually unpleasant experience. I thought it might be, but it, and it was. It was. I'd been warned. The, but I was really interested to do it. I never want to do it again, yeah. but, you know. Now, what's so unsatisfying about testifying before the Senate? Oh, it's, it's all it's for like, show rather all, than for real? Yeah, it's like a Stalinist show trial. It's not, you know, no one listens to So they to beat you. up on you about, it was this about global warming? Mm. And they just beat up on you. You also went down and met with the president on that. Did you know? I did. Well, was I was asked to come and see him. And what did he want to know? He wanted just to, to, to sort of say hello, and I signed some books. And oh, that, I mean, I thought maybe he was curious and said... Michael, when everybody else seems to be going the other way, you're here and tell me why, what, do you, what have you discovered? I mean, there was a genuine curiosity about what you thought about global warming? I think that he was interested in trying to um, present his point of view, and he was, since I had that point of view too, he was saying, what, you know, how, how do you think about getting people to understand the other point of view? And I said, I don't really have any idea, which is true. I still don't. But... The whole thing has moved now to the board. But, you know, one, one of the things I wanted to say to you is that but I'm often asked the question in the U.S., which is everyone disagrees with you. And it's actually something that um, Einstein was asked. What, about relativity or what? No, I mean, he was... <laughs> <What's> when, <laughs> no uh, one agrees certain, with him. At a certain point, um, the, the Nazis had made this book of, uh, because it was Jewish science, and, and 200 scientists had said that Einstein was wrong about relativity. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked Einstein, what do, you, what do you think there are 200 people that say you're wrong? And he said, all it takes is one person to prove me wrong. You see, consensus science is not science. Consen all this consensus stuff is about politics. The real question is what is about the science. And that's why, you know, I said, for example, if you've got a good model, run it out okay, 10 but, years uh, and fair. let's see you show it. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I don't think anybody's saying this is going to happen in 10 years, so, I mean... No, but I'm saying if your model is good for 100 years, let's see it run for 10. Okay. Tell me what the temperature is. Suppose they would turn around and say, okay, Michael, you prove we're wrong. Would you prove they're wrong in your judgment? No, no one can prove it wrong. We're talking about what the future is. No one knows what the future is. Charlie, I have to tell you, if there's anything that's so weird for me, it it's is. this. That you, that you can talk to scientists and you say, what do you think of that shop corner with a neon sign that says psychic reading? Somebody's going to tell you the future. And they go, oh, that's a fraud. That's a charlatan. No one can do that. You go, great. 
What do you think about the, telling me what the global temperature of the climate, I predict the climate, no one can predict the weather for a month, the climate, a hundred years from now, and they go, oh, that's, that's science, that's important, pay $500 million for that, a billion dollars. I mean, it's bizarre to me. No one can predict the future. What's your biggest regret about all the things you have done? I, you know, it's, it's a funny... I've done things that have been very difficult for me, like this book that we're talking about. I think it's a sort of function of personality. I, I tend not to regret. You know, it's, it's, I did it right or wrong. I mean, I, I think there's going to be really interesting. The, the guy that I think you ought to get on this show is a guy named Reed Bryson who was the leading climatologist of the 1970s and became very heavily committed in global cooling, predicted millions dead and so on. He's still around. He's still writing and commenting. And I think he's had the experience of having made a mistake. And if I'm right, mm. then there's going to be enormously fascinating history because there's a whole band of intelligentsia and a whole band of scientists that I'm going to turn out to have made a significant major mistake. I actually look at it in terms of where we're going. I mean, is, if this doesn't work out, then science itself is going to be enormously injured. Are we, as Western societies, moving away from science? Are we having less and less interest in verified data? I mean, I, I start talking about verified data and people kind of, mm, they seem uninterested in that. They seem uninterested in having real certainty about things and more interested in this sort of cohesiveness and consensus idea. Maybe we're moving in some other direction. Um, and I'm actually, I mean, it sounds perverse to many people, but I'm proud of having done the book about global warming. I mean, because if you listen to this knew, conversation, you I have to be I knew everybody was going to be against me, and I thought, this is what I believe, and I'm sorry, and I said it, and I did it, and I've taken just flack for it. But you know what? It is what I believe. And, and, and you're proud that you did it because of you, you, you went into a rough seas. Very rough seas. And nasty and personal and brutal and unfair and mean. Well, what was and nasty, unending. brutal, unfair and mean? Oh, Charlie, this is, I mean, you, you want to look at what people say. For example, when I started talking about genetics, people said, well, you know, you might get some criticism for this. Well, I haven't gotten any criticism for genetics, let me tell you. I mean, you know, <laughs> I know what criticism is. But I, I've had the experience of having had books in print for 40 years. So I can go back and look at the stand that I took in favor of abortion when I was a medical student in Boston in 1967, six years before Roe v. Wade, and I can look at that and go, was I right or not? And I think, damn it, I was right. And I'm imagining when I wrote this book, when I wrote The, the um, State of Fear, I was imagining, what's it going to look like in 40 years? I think I'm going to come out just fine.